we blame the residents for not showing up to these meetings. If we want to increase patrolling, it is essential that we invite the community to be part of these initiatives. I've already established relationships that will help move us in this direction, and I've been recently endorsed by the Fraternal Order of Police. None of the other challengers can attest to these kind of relationships, and it is crucial when it comes to building a safer neighborhood. Thank you. Next question. The Rogers Park Community Organization strongly advocates the establishment of youth programs and activities in the 50th Ward. In keeping with this mission, it sponsored a youth basketball tournament this past spring, bringing together students and families from both the private and public schools in the neighborhood. Unfortunately, though, there are not enough resources and opportunities available for youth in the neighborhood, and the resources and facilities that do exist are poorly maintained and underfunded. With a question starting with Mr. Brewer, what do you view as the most pressing issue affecting young people in West Rogers Park? If you're elected alderman of the 50th Ward, what steps do you plan to take regarding this issue? And if elected alderman, how do you plan to bring youth organizations and agencies in West Rogers Park together to address issues affecting young people? First, we need to get out information about the programs that already exist. Uh, we can do this through some simple common sense means, such as a real ward website with real information, a ward newsletter, things, simple things that we just don't have today in the 50th ward. But we also need an alderman who's more engaged with both the community and the park district or, and the schools, so more than both. <laughs> the alderman needs to be advocating for us, fighting for us with the park district to see that we have the services, the programs, the facilities that we deserve here in the ward. But when as principal for a day at Clinton School, I talked to the teachers and students, their biggest concern was crime and safety on their way to and from school, after school. So first, you know, we need to make the parks that we already have safe for those kids to use after school. They, they told me how they see drug dealing in the parks, gangs in the parks. There are facilities there for them, but they don't have access to them because of safety issues. So again, all of these things uh, are connected, and safety is as much of an issue in providing programs for youth as the buildings and the programs themselves. We need an alderman who is more involved, an alderman who's willing to work with the police, with the schools, the park district, and of course parents, to, to make all of these things happen and to really, really, truly represent us and advocate for us. Thank you. Ms. Dollar? Thank you, this is my favorite because everyone thinks I'm a child sometimes. <laughs> Our young people need activities and programs that will lead them to networks and good jobs. More importantly, what they need is the opportunity to build a pathway to success and mentors who will help get them there. Our young people really need somebody who who has the experience and somebody who really takes a look at what our, what our youth are going to be doing these days. Um, my worldview um, in this neighborhood has really shaped my experience. Like other issues such as safety and diversity and community planning, I have experience in this field. I was fortunate to have grown up inside supportive organizations like Public Allies and MIGPA Challenge. And these programs led me to other things, such as being on the administrative team of the Chicago Youth Net Centers, getting a master's in counseling, and serving as a family therapist at Alternatives, and becoming an assistant director for student life at Loyola University. This experience really equips me with the challenge of bringing in activities and programs for young adults who are striving for leadership and success but they don't have the opportunities in this ward right now. 
As alderman, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fight for funding for the not-for-profit organizations that have youth services. I'm going to form an interfaith council that would define opportunities for high school students to earn their 40 hours community service within the ward. I'm going to train my staff on how to identify young leaders and to refer them to youth leadership opportunities such as Mikva Challenge, Public Allies, and Interfaith Youth Court. And I would designate one staff member that is a grant maker to connect local talent to the parks, districts, and, and to find supplemental programs for our youth. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Afnan? Youth in the 50th Board need positive programs, both educational and recreational, and unfortunately, these programs are not available in the 50th Ward, thanks to our aldermen. I believe that more after-school programs have to be made available to our young people. I have already said that if elected, I would donate 25% of my aldermanic salary to those programs in the 50th Ward. One of those programs which I will support financially will be extended after school programs for our young kids, for our, young, for our youth. Additionally, I would seek more fundings from the city, park district, and board of education for these type of programs in our community. Alderman Aftab would hold meetings of all the community organizations in the 50th Ward to provide a coordinated ward-wide efforts to address the many issues with, the, with those who, which will affect our youth. I, besides all the endorsement that I got from all over the you know, county and city, the commissioners, I recently got endorsement from Park District Commissioner Roy Shalabi. And I can work with him to secure more fundings from the Park District for our youth. Thank you. Thank you. The 50th Ward is probably the most diverse ward in the city. It comprises many different interest groups and neighborhoods with many different needs. Starting with Ms. Dolar, the question before us now is, as Alderman, how will you structure your ward services office to provide resources and information to address the diverse needs of all of our residents. I believe that city services should be accessible to all people in the ward, and the residents should be informed of city resources and initiatives. A good location and an accessible and well-trained staff are the first things I would initiate for our office. First, I would move the office to, more, to a more visible and central location, and it will be open to the public at least 40 hours a week, including some weekend and evening hours, so that seniors and working people of our ward can visit our office at a time that is safe and convenient for them. Second, I'll hire and maintain qualified staff who will not only understand the needs of our community, but identify talents. I'll train them to be customer service oriented and responsive to the multilingual population that we serve. This includes a full-time constituent service director and a full-time outreach liaison. Senior citizen outreach is a priority of mine, and my office will ensure that seniors have information they need for health service initiatives, safety, and other programs that are specifically for them. In addition, like I mentioned before, I will hire one person whose sole job is to identify additional grants and resources to build partnerships with local schools and other vital programs and organizations. And finally, my ward office will actively inform the community about the resources they need through newsletters, public forums, and a ward service website, not just during the pre-election season, but all year round. One of our main reasons why we need to expect more for our ward is because for too long, people have been disrespected by our alderman's office while seeking, at other times, what they feel is that when they get services, 
that they owe them, that, that he's giving them a favor. We can't expect this anymore. Thank and you. we can't have this anymore. Thank you. Mr. Apton. Funny thing that you asked this question. There is a board superintendent appointed by this alderman. Uh, you know what he's been doing for the last six months with your tax dollars? He's been making sure that stone signs are up all over the board. <laughs> I think the job of a board superintendent was, uh, was to ensure that adequate city services such as snow removal, garbage pickup, and street cleaning are delivered to the residents of the 50th Ward. Alderman Afta will make sure that the resident of 50th Ward will get those services. I will appoint a Ward Superintendent who will be more concerned about delivering quality services to the resident of the 50th Ward and not concerned <laughs> about coordinating absentee Vo a ballot voting program and sign, you know, uh, placement for the alderman stone. I'm the only candidate in this race who has experience in, in coordinating and delivering high level services to the clients. And you will be my clients. And based on my experience, that's what I'll do. I would institute computerized tracking system to monitor all service requests and be able to give residents updates concerning their service delivery dates, just like a help desk system in the uh, IT business. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brewer. <coughs> Basic city services aren't favors. You, you, you shouldn't have to beg for them. You shouldn't get a response of, why should I help you? Or you're lucky your street gets plowed at all, or your street gets cleaned at all. These are things we should expect. They should be professionally managed. They should be provided fairly, equitably throughout the ward without favoritism, without political considerations, without <laughs> uh, sometimes withheld for, for other reasons. It's not just favors, it's, it's withholding as well. So, if, you know, among the very first things I'll do is open a centrally located accessible ward service office, staff it with a professional staff that the alderman's budget allows for, people who know how to do their job, who can provide exceptional constituent service. Treat people with respect. Get things done. Return phone calls. I'll create a ward website, as I said, with real information. Include things like a community calendar, information on city services, street cleaning schedules, simple things that you should expect. And in addition to the regular daytime hours of the office, uh, scheduled evening and weekend hours. I'll host a town hall meeting, at least once a month, where you can come and tell me what needs to be done, what you're concerned about, what your issues are, and come back next month and hold me accountable in front of a group like this, not in my office with the door closed when you're the only one who ever complains about that. <laughs> These seem like basic common sense things, but they're not being done now, at least not in the 50th Ward, and they will be done starting in my first 100 hours as alderman. Thank you. Um, before we go on, I'm going to let the candidates know I'm going to use the prerogative of the moderator since you've been very efficient in your answers and probably ask a fifth question before we go to audience questions. And I'll be ready for those questions in just a moment or two. Um, next question. The Rogers Park Community Organization sponsored a referendum on the November ballot calling for the creation of a community planning board. On November 7th, the referendum passed overwhelmingly. The purpose of the proposed community planning board is to make recommendations on zoning, land use, and development within the ward, and to articulate a common vision of the neighborhood that can serve as a guide for planning and community development. With the first question going to Mr. Aftam, 
do you support the establishment of a community planning board how do you foresee working with this board specifically would you bring all zoning matters to its attention would you require developers to appear before it would you support and enforce its decisions and as you answer that what is your vision of the ward Specifically, how would you like to see it develop commercially and residentially over the next 10 years? In two minutes. <laughs> I support the creation of a community planning board. And as part of my campaign, I have supported this concept by proposing an automatic zoning advisory board. Um, I believe that there should be transparency in the zoning process. And um, under Alderman Stone, zoning matters in the 50th ward have been conducted behind closed doors. But under Alderman AFTA, those doors will be open and the community will be invited in to participate. I would require all developers seeking a zoning change to go before the board and make a presentation at the meeting, which would also be open to the general public. I will respect the decision made by the board and I would abide by them. I believe that development, both commercial and residential, is an important component of a healthy, vibrant community. However, that development must be planned and controlled so it does not drastically change the character of the community. Control development which takes into account the needs and desires of the residents of the 50th Ward is the type of development which I support. In order to preserve the residential character of the 50th Ward, I would impose a moratorium on multi-unit developments in the single-family neighborhoods. In order to elevate the issues related to parking, I would require all new residential development to provide two parking spaces for every unit built. Thank you. Mr. Brewer. Nope, <coughs> Thank you. Well, today in the 50th Ward, we have no voice in planning for the future of our community. Planning decisions, zoning decisions, development decisions are about what the alderman wants and about what a few connected insiders want. It's not about what we want or need, and it doesn't seek our input. Just go down the street to Rockwell and Devon, uh, and I'll remind you what I'm talking about. So yes, I believe we need a planning board. We desperately need a community planning board. It's been a pillar of my campaign from the very start. Uh, a year ago, I think in fact, last January, really a year ago, I was working with uh, members of this group and organizers of this event and outlining what the structure of such a planning board might be. Developers 